What is up guys, welcome to Diving Garage. In today's video, we're gonna be covering part two of the water pump bypass video I did a little while back. Link in the description if you didn't see that one. I got a couple things set up that we can look at, so let's dive in. All right, I just wanna take a couple minutes and respond to a few questions I got about this, why it's important and how exactly does this work. Uh, so this here is obviously a water pump I have, uh, and this is the bypass I was talking about in the last video. You can see it comes from the radiator out, which is the water pump in, and you can see how it feeds that hole right there, which goes to a cylinder head. It's not this port, but I couldn't quite sneak a zip tie in through there to show you how it connects to the actual coolant jacket system and how it would eventually go to the intake, which then goes to the um, thermostat, right? So I also have another zip tie here. If you can see this black one I have in my hand, which also comes from, oh, where is it? Where is it? Come here. There it is. Which also comes from the radiator out or water pump in. And I have it there to show you how this path right here is a dedicated path coming from the radiator to the passenger side of the block and then directly to the passenger side of the head. And then, like I said in the previous video, this prevents cavitation, prevents pressure buildup that you don't want and overall helps cool things down. So uh, this zip tie here shows the main coolant circuit. So this black one here, this black one here, I'm gonna take it out and show you. When, this, uh, when your engine's running and all the pulleys are doing their things, the water pump is doing this right here. Now, if you'll notice the way that this is turning with the engine is that a lot of the water or coolant is being directed to this driver's side. So when the water comes in, the water's being pushed around this circle and all of this area here where the water is, is kind of being pushed this way. It's more favored this direction. And then this one over here isn't quite so much favored. If you were to kind of break it up, I would say from here all the way around to here would be going towards the driver's side head and only this small section will be going towards the passenger side head. And you can actually see, let me get the light on. You can actually see right up in here, oh, let me get that out of the way, right there, that little cavity right here. That's what, that this small section is what feeds the passenger side head. So I think that's a good reason that GM did this. They realized this is a problem they can't really get around. So they added this bypass. And remember this applies to first gen small block Chevys and not Vortec pumps, not Vortec intakes, not Vortec heads. We're talking uh, Gen 1 stuff here. And if you're, the reason you need to know is that if you're applying or installing Vortec heads on your Gen 1 block, you have to account for these things. And this here is for the uh, heater core. It's not the bypass like you would think on a Vortec style pump. Yeah, so that's one thing I wanted to cover there, the bypass, how it's got a dedicated feed from the radiator. The rotation of the coolant fins sort of favors the driver's side head, and that is another reason that this bypass really is needed. All right, if you look here at our uh, budget build challenge engine, sorry for the mess, I really don't have a ton of space in here. One more time, this is the bypass, and it goes straight to the head, as to where this main coolant feed goes into the water jacket. So when that, when that, oh, let me get you in the frame here. So when that water comes in through here, it's filling up this bottom section of the water jacket. It's cooling the combustion chamber in the, on the cylinder side, of course. And then it's coming up through these holes here, 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 and all around. And then going to the head and then going to the intake. So it takes kind of a while, you know, it, it's a little bit, a uh, little bit quicker path if you just take this bypass here and feed the head a little bit cooler water. And just as a side note, if you like budget builds, how-to instructional guides, or just enjoy engine building in general, I got a link in the description for this engine build and a previous one I did. So there's plenty of things to check out there. So what happens if you're running a Gen 1 setup everything and you block that bypass in the block and prevent the water pump bypass from doing its job? Well, what you get is excessive temperature, excessive pressure. You get a boil over, you might get an explosion of coolant, blowing radiator hoses off you can get a bunch of bad stuff. So uh, the moral of the story and the key takeaway, if you're running a Gen 1 pump, Gen 1 block, Gen 1 heads, no, block, no water pump block. Do not block that bypass. Another key takeaway is if you're running a Gen 1 pump with Vortec heads and a Vortec intake, you should block it because that coolant has nowhere to go. Because in Vortec heads, that hole in that passage is not there. The bypass is an external bypass that goes from the intake or from the water pump then to the intake. So it works a little bit differently. Um, I'd probably argue a little better, but that's what you need to know if you're working with a uh, Gen 1 pump, Gen 1 block, and either Gen 1 or Vortec heads. All right guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. As always, drop some more comments down below. If there's any, if there's another slew of questions about this, I'll do another follow-up video. 
I don't have a problem. It's all good. That's about it. I get out there, dive into your next project. Catch you next time.